You can never have too many battery chargers. Light shoes. Light shoes, yeah, that's the truth. Because in this modern world we live in, batteries are even more common than they've ever been. Things like this, this massive power bank here, which unfortunately at the moment is actually broken. No, it won't charge. It's not even recognizing the charger. So what do you do? Rip it apart, of course. So here's what it looks like inside. Control circuitry on the front, there's the inverter in there, and this behind here is our battery. It's actually quite a nicely made bit of kit, this. It's got a nice big chunky wires on the battery because it's capable of about a thousand watts. Um, so we need to find out what's actually wrong here. So first check with the multimeter set to DC voltage. So we know that this is the main positive. We know that this is a serial connection between cell one and two. So basically these are cells, these are individual cells, one, two, three, four, and they're series connected. So it's basically a four cell pack. So if we measure here and here with a DC multimeter like this, we should see a voltage. Or maybe not, if the battery's actually knackered, it might not be showing any voltage at all. So if we put our terminals across here, we can see we're getting nearly 12 volts. So I don't think there's anything wrong with this battery um, itself. What you can do is check the individual cell voltages here. You can see cell number one here is 3.1. And if we go to these two here, 2.9. So maybe there's a bit of discrepancy here. Maybe the BMS has actually triggered some, you know, imbalance issue or something like that. I don't know what the tolerance is on this battery management system. Um, but yeah, we're showing 2.7, 2.7 or 2.8. Uh, we're showing 2.9. And then this one here, which is a little bit over. So that might be the problem it's it's kind of got out of balance and then maybe the the bms itself has just cut it out and of course it's not turning on at all so what i'm going to do a little trick of the trade these wires here are balancing wires and they're going to this bms now what can sometimes happen is the bms can actually sort of trip and it basically just cuts power to the rest of the main board so what you can do sometimes is you can actually just remove this connector and reset the bms so what we'll do here is we'll just plug that back in and then we'll see if it fires up. There you go, it's actually coming on. So we've got an error message showing here now, which is a good, a good start. Um, we might have to Google and see what that actually means. It's probably kind of flagging an imbalance or something to do with the, the battery system. Let's try plugging the charger in and see if anything happens. All right, it's definitely not happy, but we are getting one battery bar when we plug that in. So I'm wondering if this might sort of sort itself out. Right, so I'm gonna to attempt to straighten this battery out. What I've done is I've actually just wired up, very simply, because you've got these little screws which um, conveniently hold all the cells together, you can just tuck a wire under there. So you can easily connect up a little JST XH balancing connector, because obviously this, you can't really use this with any of the chargers that I've got. Um, so this will plug right in any of my RC chargers that I've got. And also I've wired up a main positive and a main negative to an XT60. So literally like three or four minutes that's taken to sort of sort that out. And then um, I've got my ISDT charger here. So if we get this charger and we plug that JSTXH plug into the balancing port of the charger, what you can see on here is the individual cell voltages. So you can see there's one that's a lot higher than the others. And I think that is what is causing the problem. Well, actually they're, they're, they're very, all of them are quite different. Um, one's 2.7 and one's 2.9. So yeah, we need to straighten this out. So we can do that with this charger. We'll just plug the XT60 main lead in there. Now we can start a balancing charge. I'm going to do this at a very low current, um, something like one amps. So I've set battery type LIFE because it's a lithium ferrite phosphate battery. Um, cell voltage 3.6. So it's a four cell pack, one amp and then we can start that going. So you can definitely see from the front screen there, there's a big difference, 2.79 to 3.12. We can leave that there now. It should be nice and safe with that charger doing its job. And um, hopefully, in a little while, that would have straightened itself out. Now, I definitely wouldn't leave that in the house charging like that, um, even if it is at such a low current like that. It's probably unlikely anything's gonna happen, but yeah, don't leave batteries charging unattended. Never a good idea. Right, so it's a few hours later now, and I'm gonna check the situation on here. And um, look, looks like it's balanced out pretty well. 
Um, 3.24, 3.25, 3.25, 3.27. We've put in about four amperes, so it's probably about four hours actually. And I think that should be enough. Hopefully now, when we reconnect the BMS, it will come back to, come back to life and it won't have any error messages. In. So we'll plug our BMS back in. That's back in there like that. And I'll take all those wires off in a minute if it's if it's actually working. Let's just turn it on and see see what the situation is. There we go. There's no error messages, but there's also no battery bars showing on there, so that's quite that might, that's a bit concerning. Um, shouldn't be flat. I've just plugged the charger in, and it's actually so it's showing that it's charging now. So that's good. So. I thought they were LIFE cells. Maybe they're not. Maybe they're actually lithium polymer or lithium iron. I need to have a look on the bottom. I think it'll probably tell us on the bottom label. But that's charging now. So, yeah, I guess we just have to keep an eye on it, but we'll see see what happens. So just looking on the bottom panel here, um, this is the EB150 um, Power Oak model. Is the Power Oak logo there. And it's showing 1.5 kilowatt hours and 14.8 volts, which is actually... You know the usual kind of lithium iron nominal voltage 3.7 volts a cell uh, for a lithium iron uh, battery so you know lithium ferrite phosphate is normally a different voltage so i think this is the reason why we're getting no battery bars on here because 3.2 volts would be pretty discharged so we'll just keep charging it up and see we've already got one bar on there and if you sort of take that out uh, it's still showing one bar so i think basically we just need to just need to get it charged up and I think it'll be okay. So it's still charging, it's been about an hour now, it's on two bars, so it looks like it's it's charging, it's working okay. I might test it in a minute and just plug like a, a heater or something like that into it and see if it you know doesn't throw any error messages when we plug something higher load into it. So it's good, looks like we fixed it anyway. So the reason why I thought it might be lithium ferrite phosphate is because all over their marketing information they actually say you know it's a safe technology. I don't know you know what sort of cells they're using it in this. It could be you know a kind of different version of a lithium ion battery but it seems like it behaves exactly like you know any other lithium cell like 3.7 volts nominal, 4.2 volts top of the charge and if it goes below 3 then the BMS is probably going to cut in and go right no we're not having any more of that but I think what's happened is because I was using this in a garage situation and it was pretty it's been pretty cold in the UK recently and I think what's happened is the system has maybe not shut down you know or maybe it doesn't have the ability to actually stop charge when um, it's cold basically what I had was a couple of solar panels plugged into this unit and it was just charging you know during the day and then I was using the power at night maybe for lights and, and other stuff and then eventually one day it just went no nah, error messages and it just wasn't working anymore so yeah I think it's quite possible that because of the low temperatures it's got out of balance maybe because of that maybe not maybe there's just a bad cell in there and it's hitting the top of the charge earlier than the others and that's just going to keep happening from now on who knows we'll have to test it out and see what happens anyway guys if you do have a problem with your power bank and all these new things that are coming out it's highly likely things are going to start going wrong with these um, as more and more of them hit the market so yeah maybe this will help you sort it out anyway guys thanks for watching and i'll catch you next time <laughs>